Pat, let's take a moment and just take a step back and think about all of the incredibly difficult and divisive issues that are hitting Los Angeles all at the same time. A global pandemic, financial crisis from the pandemic, police violence, racial injustice, all things that tend to divide us. So it may not come as a surprise that two of the most powerful institutions in Los Angeles, the police department and city hall, seem to be living in the fault lines. Los Angeles is a fractured city tonight, from the pavement to the precincts. If it wasn't for them, this city would be burnt down right now. From City Hall. It's stressful and it's traumatic. To city streets. No justice, no peace. When Mayor Eric Garcetti made this comment yesterday. And we say we are going to be who we want to be, or we're going to continue being the killers that we are. The police union said he was talking about them. Yesterday, he smeared every single police officer in Los Angeles and across the nation by calling us killers. Today, the mayor said that isn't what he meant at all. When I talked about killers, I said our collective, our collective burden here in this society is that we let black men and women die. In this city, if you're born in Watts, you live 12 years less than if you live in Bel Air. Today, Mayor Garcetti spoke about police abuses. And I want to once again state that harsh police tactics like we've seen on several videos this week have no place in the City of Angels. And where officers are deployed, they must keep the peace without violence. But he also praised the dedication and bravery of the majority of officers and said it is not fair for the city to task them with mental health care or to pick up the slack left by the failures of school systems. That's why he wants to take $250 million from the LAPD and other city departments and use it to enrich communities of color, claiming in the long run it will help police fulfill their responsibility to protect and to serve. So when we say we are going to share resources, it's so that that family that you visited to help investigate a crime and solve something and give them solace can also produce a household full of graduates and executives instead of dropouts and prisoners. It's so that we can roll out mental health professionals and social workers to help get somebody off the street. But many of the police aren't buying it. Now you're finding the money to give $250 million to Black Lives Matter? That's the police union's vice president, Sergeant Jaretta Sanchez, speaking to city council member Monica Rodriguez with officers from the Valley Bureau looking on and applauding. And now you're cutting from, these, from their families when they put everything on the line, we're gonna fight. We spoke to Sergeant Sanchez yesterday. It's a full straight political move. It was done on the backs of Black Lives Matter and all these other groups, anti-police groups that are advocating for the defunding of police. So we want to make it clear that it has to be done the right way and not just because some groups are pushing the mayor, city council, and the police commission to cut funding for LAPD. The only ones that will suffer are the citizens of Los Angeles. But the mayor says the last few tumultuous weeks articulated by thousands of voices in the street demand a response that can begin to deal with the core inequities that have been dividing this city for decades. I want my city family, our peace officers, and our civilians to know, I know you're all sacrificing, but doesn't the worst economic moment of our life, the greatest health threat of our lives, and this powerful moment of enough is enough about American racism demand that of us all. And in what may be a first step, the mayor announced, the, uh, announced I should say, uh, a new department, the Department of Civil and Human Rights, which will be put together in order to try to protect for all the people who live here, protect them against any form of discrimination. Let's go back to you. Randy, thank you.